Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. We are from Group Two. Today we are going to present our topic, which is electrical power generation, transmission, and distribution. My group consists of four members, which is me, Eva Asmida, Nadia Najiha, Kasrina Shazwani, and the last one, Romilia Teddy. These are our subtopic that we presented by us. What is electrical grid? What is the part of main component of power system? An electrical grid is an interconnected network for delivering electricity from the place where it is generated all the way to consumer members at the end of the line. Electric grid is built with three major components such as generation, transmission and distribution. There are several key pieces constructed to support the delivery of the electricity to the consumer. It consists of this component. First part of main component is generating plant where the electricity is produced. Second part of main component is transmission line that will carry the power from one place to another place over long distance. Third part of main component is substations where the electricity is either increasing or decreasing. The fourth part of main component is transformer which is a mechanism that increase or decrease the electricity voltage. And the last one, fifth part of main component is distribution line where same as for transmission line but only for the lower voltage. Here a breakdown of the path electricity takes to get to your home. Electricity is generated at a power plant or other facilities such as hydroelectric dam. In fact, most of the country electricity come from power plants that can generate steady reliable electric power around the clock. The electricity is then sent over vast distance by a way of a high voltage transmission line. The electricity arrives at your co-op substation where the transformer will lower the voltage then send it to your home using distribution power line. Then the electricity will end up in the consumer members. Hi there! Did you know the lights in your home are actually flickering every second? This means that the lights are continuously turning on and off so fast that human eyes cannot see it unless you record the lights in a slow motion. To be more precise, this flickering is caused by an alternating current frequency. A frequency is referred to as the rate at which current changes direction per second. In Asia, power line frequency is typically 50 Hz, which means the lights flicker 50 times per second and it happens too fast that we can see it. Have you ever wondered how electrical power is being distributed from power station and all the way to your house? Starting from power station, the electrical power will be transmitted to substation for stepping up or stepping down the voltage followed by distribution to user. Along the way, the power will flow through a transmission line known as three-phase power system and reduced to single phase for domestic use. As mentioned, Three-phase power system is a common method of power transmission. In simpler terms, the system uses three wires for generation, transmission and distribution. Today, three-phase power is still chosen as a power of choice for many different types of application. Even generators at power stations supply three-phase electricity. This is a way of supplying three times as much electricity along three wires as can be supplied through two phase without having to increase the thickness of wires. The three phase system induced in the generator gives the three phase voltage an equal magnitude and frequency. So by having this, it provides an uninterruptible power. For instance, if one phase of the system is disturbed, then the remaining two phases of the system are able to continue supplying the power. For easier understanding on the concept, let's use a clock face and see that line 1 is at 12 o'clock position. The electrons in line 1 are going to be flowing towards the north pole of the magnet. When the magnet swings 90 degrees, thus perpendicular to line 1, the electrons in line 1 will start moving.
Queensland, as magnet swings more than 90 degrees and the south pole of the magnet comes closer to line 1, the electrons will reverse, which means the direction of current will reverse. When generating three-phase power, the copper lines are located 120 degrees apart. So, when it is at 4 o'clock position, that's 120 degrees away from line 1. Meanwhile, 8 o'clock position is 120 degrees away from both 4 and 12 o'clock positions. The three lines are actually spaced equally around the circle. Let's look again at the example. As the magnet is spinning, when the North Pole is at 1 o'clock, it becomes perpendicular to line 2. So, for sure, electrons stop moving in line 2. However, they are still moving in line 1, attracted by the closer North Pole, and they are moving in line 3, repelled by the South Pole. Next, when magnet's North Pole faces 2 o'clock, then line 1 and line 2 are affected by the North Pole, where the South Pole is directly opposite line 3, so it's now at peak current. At 3 o'clock, the magnet is perpendicular to line 1, so electrons stop moving, but line 2 is affected by the North Pole and line 3 is affected by the South Pole, so the current is flowing in line 2 and line 3. Hopefully, this example shows you how, at any time, current is always flowing in at least two lines. Let's focus on line 1. Line 1 is at its peak current when the North Pole points to both 12 and 6 o'clock position. It is at zero current when the North Pole points to 3 and 9 o'clock. Only one of the three lines is ever at peak, but because there are three lines, there are three positive peaks and three negative peaks for every cycle. Now, let's explain those confusing waveforms that are frequently used to depict three phases. If you look at the waveform example, you can see the first line in blue, and it starts at zero. This means that magnet is perpendicular to that line. As the magnet moves, you can see the current go to its peak. Then, as positive pole spins past that wire, the current starts to weaken until the magnet is perpendicular again, which results in zero current. As the negative pole starts to come closer, the current reverses and moves in the other direction towards another peak before returning to zero current. Hence, this completes one full cycle for that line. In order for the two-dimensional chart to show the relationship between the lines, it now uh, shows a gap that signifies the length of time it takes for the magnet to spin 120 degrees. This is when the red line is at zero current. As the magnet keeps spinning, the red line will move towards its peak positive current, then come back to zero after which the current will change direction. The chart also shows that the third line will start at zero current 120 degrees after the second line. So, if you look at these three lines, you can see that when one line is at its peak, the other two lines are still generating current, but they are not at full strength, meaning they are not at peak. So, as the electrons flow from a positive to a negative peak, the current is displayed as flowing from positive to negative values. Remember, the positive and negative connotation is only used to describe how current alternates. So, with that much elaboration on three-phase power, it is best to also know what are the disadvantages of this power transmission system. First, the system requires fewer conductors compared to single-phase system, thus indicates cost efficiency while also increasing the efficiency of current supply. Next, the system are able to give continuous supply to the load, even if one of the wires of the system is disturbed. Lastly, three-phase electrical power system has higher efficiency and minimum losses. Overall, this is how electricity flows from power station to its user. So with this, let's move on to how the power is either stepped up or stepped down for transmission and distribution. The definition of transformer, the function of transformer, how does it work, and transformer application. What is transformer? Transformer is known as electromagnetic device that transfer electrical energy from one AC circuit to another circuit. 
What is the function of transformer? It is to increase, build up or decrease, collapse the current, voltage or power. How does it work? When two coils are placed very closely to each other, the changing magnetic flux line produced by the first coil will cut through the second coil. The two coils are said to be magnetically linked or coupled. As a result, a voltage is induced. This is how you calculate the amount of voltage in use in the second coil. Turn ratio is a useful parameter for ideal transformer. Testing the primary and secondary coils for continuity is the easiest way to test a transformer. Since the primary and secondary of a transformer are coils, both of them should have continuity between each end of the coil. What is step up and step down transformer? Step up transformer has more turns on the secondary than the primary side of the transformer so that it will increase the input voltage. Step down transformer has more turns on the primary than the secondary side of the transformer so that it will decrease the input voltage. The amount of current in the primary side of transformer is dependent on the turns ratio of the transformer and the load that is applied to the secondary side of the transformer. To calculate the primary current of a transformer, we compare the power in to the power out of the transformer. Transformer changes both the voltage and current on the primary side to the different values on the secondary side. This makes a load resistance appear to have a different value on the primary side. There are three types of power losses in a non-ideal transformer, which is iron or core losses, copper losses, and the last one is total losses in transformer. Auto transformer is used in low voltage application seen has only one winding. Induction circuit breaker used to shut off the current in a circuit that prevent fires caused by a short in an electrical devices. Lighting ballast used to start by the lamp by producing the necessary voltage and limits current through the lamp. Coupling transformer isolate each sections of the amplifier so individual amplifier characteristic will not interfere with the others. To control, regulate and switch on or off the electrical power system. It is to protect the lines when the fault occurs in power system. The switch gear will react as the circuit breaker since the heavy current flow through that broken equipment. The switch gear will act whenever there is a fault. The switch gear closes the faulty circuit and disconnected the disrupted line. To ensure that the appliance do not get damaged and there is an uninterrupted supply of power. There are two types of switch gear, which is the outdoor switch gear and indoor switch gear. For outdoor switch gear, it is for heavy uses of voltages, such like 66 kV and above. For indoor switch gear, it is for the light uses of voltage, which is below 66 kV. Have you ever wondered what is electricity tariff and how does it affect your monthly electricity bill? Let me explain what electricity tariff is. Electricity tariff is defined as the rate at which electrical energy is applied to a consumer. There are three main types of electrical energy consumers consisting of industrial, domestic, and commercial. Objectives of tariff are to sell electrical energy to consumers, returns the cost of producing and supplying electrical energy, and earns a reasonable profit. To conclude, tariff is equal to the sum of cost of producing and supplying electrical energy and profit. Power factor is defined as a measure of how effectively incoming power is used in your electrical system, energy efficiency. Power factor can be expressed as the ratio of real power, Kw, to apparent power, Kva. K 
KW or real power is power that actually powers the equipment and performs useful productive work. It is also called actual power, active power or working power. KVAR or reactive power is power required by some equipment like transformers and motors to produce a magnetic field to enable real work to be done. It is necessary to energize this equipment. However, it does not perform any productive work. KVA or apparent power is the total power consumed. KVA is equal to KVAR plus KW. Let me explain with a simple analogy, beer analogy, to help you understand power factor. We pay for a glass of beer, but inside the glass, there are both beer and foam. The more beer we have, the less foam there is so we get good value for money. If there is a lot of foam, then there's not a lot of beer and we're not getting good value for money. A power factor of 1 would mean 100% of the supply is being used efficiently. Therefore, there is no reactive power KVAR. However, in reality, this is almost impossible to achieve. Power factor is therefore the ratio of useful power or true power divided by what we are charged for in KVA. So, it's telling us how much value for money we are getting for the power we consume. A high power factor index above 0.85 or 0.90 indicates an efficient level of electricity usage. On the other hand, a low power factor index under 0.85 or 0.90 shows an inefficient use of electricity, indicating electricity wastage. A large electric motor might typically have a power factor of about 0.85 at full load. Let's say our motor is rated at 100 kW and the power factor is 0.85. The electricity supply would have to supply 100 kW divided by 0.85 which equal to 118 kV to provide 100 kW to run the motor power factor by consumer would be penalized because they are increasing the current flow through the electricity network and causing voltage drops which reduces the supplier's distribution capacity. Cables are rated to handle a certain amount of current flowing through them. So, if a lot of large consumers connect with bad power factors, then the cables could overload. They could struggle to meet demand and capacity agreements and no new customers will be able to connect until they either replace the cables or install additional cables. Poor power factor means you need to draw more power from the electricity networks to do the same work. And the cables need to be larger so it's going to cost more. If the power factor becomes too low, then the electricity supplier might charge you a penalty fee or reactive power charge. Poor power factor can cause losses in equipment like transformers and leads to high heat gains. It can lead to voltage drops and can even reduce the life expectancy of equipment in extreme scenarios. Thank you for listening.